What the other side has to do is to learn what the narrative is and combat the narrative and almost what we're starting to do now, almost point out the absurdity of the narrative as opposed to arguing with the narrative, point out the absurdity. It started when the House Rules Committee gave routine approval to a Republican election bill. Afterward, the fireworks started. You are in violation of 1611, 34.1. When State Representative Park Cannon put her head in front of the bullhorn. As I stood on the stairs of the state capitol, a Capitol Police officer touched me. He put his hands on me and I moved away. And I just want you to Whatever you're doing, I know sometimes you sit at home and you watch this and you may be in the bathroom taking off your makeup, but I want to make sure that you're in front of the television right now. Good morning. Because what you're about to see right now is the face of the fight for your right to vote. And this is Georgia State Representative Park Cannon. Why is the governor trying to sign something in private? She is being Why arrested being and removed from the state capitol Two weeks ago today, Brian Kemp sat in his office, surrounded by a group of good old boys, and signed into law one of the most racist pieces of legislation in my lifetime. To emphasize the weight of this act, they strategically positioned themselves under a disgraceful planting, painting of a Southern plantation as if to remind the world its commitment and their commitment to apartheid. I think the optics did look bad. If it were me in that room, I would either let her keep banging and ignored her, or I would have let her in. And then I would have forced the cameras to show how she acted when she got in there. Hmm. How do you feel about that? Are you outraged? And across the internet, growing calls to boycott Delta Airlines, Coca-Cola, and Home Depot, all Georgia-based giants. And we're asking corporate America to publicly and directly oppose any discriminatory legislation. What we do is we raise the specter of voter fraud, and now we restrict legal voters, eligible voters' ability to cast ballots. And that's what's wrong with this bill. This legislation is unacceptable. Uh, it is a step backwards. We know that the current slate of laws that are being prescribed across this country actually take us to what looks like post-Reconstruction Jim Crow era laws. Jim Crow 2.0. Charging black people a poll tax to tell them that the polls were closed that day, to even putting dogs on them, to even burning down their homes and assassinating children to keep them from voting. That's Jim Crow. They have no plans of fix education, uh, fix crime, fix jobs and wages, no plan at all. The only plan they have is drive turnout. And that's what this is all about. This is to drive turnout to help Stacey Abrams when she runs against Brian Kemp next year. The problem I have is turn people out based on policy. Don't turn people out based on they're taking us back to 1950. This very act was equivalent to taking a noose and placing it not around just one black or brown Georgian, but taking nooses and simultaneously placing them around five million black and brown voters and lynching us all at the same time with one stroke of a pen. And if you are gonna turn people out based on that, it's going to backfire on you because when you do take over those positions, if you don't have a policy prescription for what you just yelled about, then you, you're going to lose them. You cannot bring water to people standing in line waiting to vote, deciding that you're going to end voting at 5 o'clock when working people are just getting off work, deciding that there will be no absentee ballots under the most rigid circumstances. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. I mean, this is gigantic. We begin today with baseball pulling this year's All-Star Game out of Georgia in protest of the state's new restrictive voting laws. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred said in a statement, quote, 
Major League Baseball fundamentally supports voting rights for all Americans and opposes restrictions to the ballot box, unquote. Governor, how does the lie get so big? Well, it certainly doesn't help when you have the president of the United States saying that. In fact, New York, where Major League Baseball is headquarters, you know, their voting laws are more restrictive. New York has 10. This bill adds the opportunity for people potentially to vote on two optional Sundays, which would give potentially some counties 19 days. You just said that uh, we were taking away drop boxes. There were counties last year that didn't even have a drop box because it's never appeared in the law before. This legislation mandates that every county have at least one drop box banning water and food. That's not true. People can serve and hand out bottles of water and food as long as they're outside the 150 foot boundary of a polling location that we keep voters from being harassed, intimidated, or electioneered. The other thing about the food and water that everybody's been making such a big deal of, a lot of that happened in Fulton County because you had people standing in line for three, four, five, six hours. My question is, why wouldn't that be unacceptable to Mr. Chenault? It certainly is to me, and this legislation addresses that mandating the number of machines and equipment that each location has to have to shorten the line. Of course, they're not talking about that because that doesn't play in to the narrative. Now, if you want to pick at little things and have a problem with one piece of it, I understand that. Uh, one part is uh, it appears that there's taking power away from the Secretary of State's office. I can, I understand that. It's the constitutional job of the Secretary of State. He has a job based on the Georgia Constitution. If you're gonna change that, I understand that being a fight. But everything else, you can't tell me that forcing African Americans to sit at the back of the bus while paying the same price, but even if there's an empty chair up front, they have to go to the back. You can't tell me that is the exact same thing as showing ID to vote. We work for Coca-Cola and Delta and Major League Baseball because they wanna put profits above election integrity. It's working for them for profit, but for the average African-American who really looking for opportunities to have jobs and businesses, when they did what they did by pulling out of Atlanta, that hurt African-Americans. Moving it to Denver was really the biggest slap in the face. You moved it from Wakanda to Asgard. That's, that's what you did. Boycotting is never something that's good. At the end of the day, boycotts hurt the wage earners of all these businesses along the way. So to even when politics gets so embedded in some of these companies and they go that far, it's the wage earners that ultimately pay so much of that price. It's a saying where it says like a stream, like a river. What washes from the top has to go to the bottom. So if the top is dirty, the bottom is going to get dirty. When someone is um, decision affects your way of life. It's very unfortunate. We look at the looks lose in thousands. Not just in thousands, but um, hours. Employees that you were looking forward to work some overtime, make some extra money. Now, if I was scheduling them for 40 hours, now I have to schedule them back for 10 hours less or 15 hours less. So that's money out of their pocket too. Not just that, but material, food-wise. I mean, I cut back at least $20,000 worth of food that I plan to order, I cut that back. The money, the money is very, very important, but the experience with the customer, to have those customers to come in, have people invited from out of state, you know, exposure to the business, people from different races and denominations come together to watch a game to build a family, to, to integrate with each other. I knocked on the door because I remembered all the lives we have lost because of racist elected officials who ignore our rights. So I knocked on the door. There wasn't any fallout from moving $100 million out of a major black city to a white city. There's no fallout from that. So there's definitely no fallout from the I outraged, angry black woman ranting and raving about Jim Crow. There's no fallout. Today, I vow to you that I will keep knocking. And I ask you, Georgia, to keep knocking. America, keep knocking. All of the marginalized people, keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking.
what they talk about is not here. When you go, you get on a highway, I dare anybody to get on the highway, get out of Metro Atlanta, pull your car over on a highway and turn on your hazards and see how quickly people will stop and help you. So they're not gonna see that you're black or white and drive on, that's not gonna happen. They're driving, the worst thing to happen in this country is we drive a wedge, a wedge between the races. If you have a wedge between, between Republicans and Democrats, you just win or lose elections. If you have a wedge between the races, now your business can't function because you have blacks and whites working together. It's not a time where you have the white guys all up at the top of the, the com company and the black people are the janitors. Everyone's mixed now. So if blacks and whites don't get, the get along, companies are gonna go out of business. Companies won't be able to function. Government won't be able to function. But there are people who for political gain and for media clicks want that to happen. They're not looking long-term, they're looking at the short-term results of winning an election by driving a wedge between the races. And that that's dangerous, that's dangerous. I, I, I don't see that ending well at all.